Hello, this is Cliff Brock of World Travel Plus. We search out the places that the travel brochures and the travel agents don't tell you about so you don't have to. Join us today to see where we wander next. Today we're in Ephesus, Turkey. Ephesus is the third largest city in the ancient world and the ruins here are extensive and complete. Some of the most complete that I've seen outside of metropolitan Athens. This is a good place to visit. It's not quite a World Travel Plus site. Lots and lots of tourists here. Kushidasi today is probably known during the daytime for its extensive ruins and beautiful amphitheater. Very, very well preserved. But once the sun goes down, uh, the beach towels are put away and all the tourists are out of those crystal clear waters, a vibrant nightlife emerges. There are several historical sites in the ancient city of Ephesus, about 17 kilometers south of Kushidasi, and that's where we spent most of our time uh, when we were there. We did not make it to the Kushidasi castle, uh, the marina, or the bazaar. It was kind of a quick stop. Tourists from all over the world come here to see this wonderful old town, but today they do a quick tour of the, of the ruins and then head for the beach, and at night, the partying begins. This 10th century wonder is still a popular destination for tourists who come to see the remnants, one of the 12 cities of the Ionian League. This city was famous for its monumental buildings, including the Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Our friend and tour guide, uh, Nasra, pointed out several things we might otherwise have missed. To me, now you're gonna see a cross shape above the entrance. You see that? Yes. It's actually this building, building the first or second century. The ruins of Ephesus include many well-preserved structures. There's the Library of Celsius, uh, the, the, the great, great Theater, and the Temple of Hadrian. The city was also home to one of the seven churches of Asia mentioned in the Book of Revelation. It's just 17 kilometers south of Kushidasi and certainly a place that you'd want to see. A place that everybody has to see, even in ancient times, was the bathroom. Interestingly enough, this city was equipped with running water. These tiles brought water even to the public commodes so that the people, irrespective of their class or wealth, who came to the auditorium were able to use the bathroom. And when you put 25,000 people into the theater in this auditorium, you are going to need a lot of bathroom facilities. This wonderful structure, so very well preserved, is still being used today for production. One of the don't miss sites in uh, Ephesus is the Library of Celsus. It's an ancient building near the modern town of Seychelles. It was built uh, in the second century. It was a funerary monument for, I'm going to try this, Tiberius Julius Celsius Palamineus. He was a former governor in a province of India, of, of Asia. It, the, in its day, the lar library was one of the largest and most impressive buildings in all of the Roman Empire. It had 12,000 scrolls, almost unheard of in the ancient world. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by fire in the 3rd century. The facade was de destroyed by an earthquake in the 10th or 11th century. Archaeologists aren't really sure which. Before leaving the ruins, there is one other must-see site. As you stand in the ruins, well, the, uh, the road or the walkway that leaves the ruins area, you look up the hill, and it's a very pleasant site, rumored to be where John the Baptist and Mother Mary built a home and lived in that area till their deaths. It's believed that they're buried in that area. Well, Nazra is a delight. Even with a husband and two small children at home, she still has all the enthusiasm that you would want from a guide. She also has knowledge. As we've traveled throughout this part of the world, we've been astounded how many of these guys, guides have university degrees. Their depth of knowledge is outstanding. Well, Nazra took to our uh, group that uh, was traveling together and really wanted me to meet her mother and her children. And she said, let's go. 
Uh, we had talked to her about taking us to a, a, a Turkish bath. That's something that sounded very exotic and that we wanted to see. And she agreed to do that and said on her way home, we would stop, meet her mother and children. So off we went to the baths. Unfortunately, as we were headed that way, Nazra checked. Her mother had gone with the mall. She didn't check with her ahead of time. So we proceeded to the baths for another unique experience. So off we went. We quickly came out of the tourist section of town and through some of the back streets where locals live and work. It seemed like everything was an uphill from, the, uh, from where we were, but it was an interesting walk through the town. We arrived at the bath and I didn't know what to expect. Turkish baths are also known as hamans and are a type of steam bath, really a place of public bathing, mostly in, in the Islamic world. Uh, they're, I guess, out of the Roman times. There are uh, signs that Turkish baths date all the way back to the 14th century during the Ottoman Empire. Uh, they were inspired by Roman practices in bathing, and Turkish baths were a source of both community gathering and hygiene maintenance. I suspect it was kind of like a, a, a warm, steamy public square. There wasn't much in the way of indoor plumbing that d didn't come into existence for a few hundred more years, so communal baths were designed to be a focal point in city centers, really accessible to everyone. The origin Turk of Turkish baths can also be tied to Islam as a form of cleansing before entering a mosque for prayer. The, as is often the case in the Islamic world, there are separate entrances for men and women, and there are even separate uh, uh, facilities uh, separating the men and, and the women. Uh, lots and lots of uh, hard surfaces, lots and lots of cleaning. You can, uh, you can have a private bath in Gwen, just as you would in, I guess, any other public bath, or you can pay a little more and have an attendant actually uh, bathe you. Uh, they exfoliate the skin, they uh, bathe you. I don't know how else to put it. If you get an attendant, you're sort of lathered up. By the way, the attendant will always be the same sex as the bather. And you're lathered up with a soap that's called a gommage, uh, and you're really washed down. Uh, you'll see these long, uh, gray, slithery things come off. It's just exfoliated skin. This uh, particular bath that we were in dated uh, back some 400 years. It looked as much like a resort hotel as anything. This one, actually, it's like an automatic door. Uh -huh. Because when you open it, that's a oh, different system here. Ah. Closes the door. All right. So it actually tell the people inside uh -huh. someone is coming inside because this it's the door. Yes, exactly. Make sound and people understand that there's someone coming inside. <laughs> we got a complete tour, Madam. Uh, uh, while Mid was occupied with Nazrum, Madam took me uh, into the women's section. I must say I was a little hesitant in a very conservative culture to go into the women's section, but Madam assured me that there were no ladies present. So in we went. It just looked like another bath section. A uh, little uh, uh, cubby holes here that uh, a woman could go in and get an exfoliation, get a complete massage. There are whole rooms devoted just to a massage. So the Turkish bath really becomes something more than just taking a bath or getting a skin treatment or something. You can go in and really get an entire body work over here, uh, uh, become clean, become massaged and relaxed, socialize with your friends, probably have a cup of tea. Um, but these women's sections were all very, very clean, very austere looking. Um, not much like the uh, uh, gyms that I've been in in the United States when I go to the gym to work out. But uh, they're very clean, very welcoming, and you, it just looks like a place that you really wouldn't mind going. Uh, these uh, beds and lavatories and so forth invariably are uh, very inviting. 
We finished our tour of the, uh, of, the, of the bath, and I confess I was pleasantly surprised at the cleanliness and the pleasant uh, aspect of the place. Uh, <clears throat> as I said earlier, it looked more like a resort hotel than a, than a ba- bathing uh, function. This uh, old fountain no longer in use uh, probably dates back to the early days of this uh, bath. Uh, that would be some 400 years or more. But as all things uh, are, we had at some point to take our leave and we, uh, we looked around one last time at, at all of the accoutrements and the woodwork and the stonework in this uh, very comfortable place. But we had to go, we were slated to leave, so off we went. Uh, we did go back through uh, the, uh, I'll call it the citizen's market. This is not the tourist market selling trinkets, but rather where locals go to buy their groceries, buy their soap, buy their shoes. According to Nasra, our guide, a delight. Too many times in Europe you find the marketplace uh, basically hawkers of tourist goods mixed in with things for the locals, uh, that, not to say that they don't have local goods. But going through Kusadashi, it was a delight. Now, number one, the market's not very crowded. Uh, you don't have hawkers wanting to sell you rugs or jewelry probably made in China. You just have a place where people could go, everyday people could go and shop for their everyday needs. The people in this town were, without exception, very warm and friendly to us as we wandered through their part of town. Some of them looked a little surprised to see somebody who was obviously not Turkish uh, from someplace else walking through this part of town. It was quite obvious to us that they just weren't accustomed to seeing uh, tourists this far out uh, of the tourist, tourist area. And so we began taking our leave from this great little town. This is one of those places that I really think we could recommend as a place to visit. But the visit must end. And so it is that we took our leave from this neat little town to head on to the next adventure. We hope you'll enjoy this one and join us for the next one. This is Cliff Brock bringing you Kusadashi for World Travel Plus. Be sure to like and subscribe and join us frequently as we look for the unknown corners of the world.